Welcome to episode 28 of Discovering Nagasaki from Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. So far, only Denise Rollheiser and Daniel Hazen were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. The first question from last week was, were there four trays of bread or more than four trays of bread in the proofer before I put the walnut rye bread tray in? The answer is more than four trays. In fact, five trays. The second question from last week was, were there eight people working at Kayazi's Sumiyaki facility or more than eight people? The answer is more than eight people. In fact, 10 people. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group O kanji root particles include stop, walk, extend, wholesale, correct, determine, dance, foot, run, and fare. Notice how all of these particles contain a variation of the stop graphene in their structure. I will cover group P kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Remember to support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below ringing the adjacent bell for updated notifications and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you the current state of our farm and how we process pumpkins for use in our bakery. I will also show you around Nagasaki's Chinatown, locally referred to as Shinji. Let's get started. It's about 9 a.m. in Suzuka Valley and you can see the frost on the windows of my truck. Right now the temperature is here is about 1 degree Celsius. We will transplant these sunny lettuce, cabbage, garland, chrysanthemum, chamomile, and pea seedlings very soon. In the side garden, we have some broccoli, cabbage, and Chinese cabbage growing, and some space to transplant chamomile and sunny lettuce seedlings in the near future. In the back, you can see that the four rows of onions and sky beans I planted last November have survived the recent snowfall. Outside of that, we have arugula, sunny lettuce, chamomile, Korean lettuce, green onions, Swiss chard, beets, and mizuna on the go. Until March, there really isn't much in the way of transplanting or seeding that we can do in the garden. What I'm going to do today is process four of the pumpkins that I harvested last year from this garden. These four pumpkins will be used to make buns and sticks in our bakery. This is a knife with a Damascus blade that a blacksmith friend of mine made for me. It's wickedly sharp. I will also use the vegetable peeler that I showed you last week. First I need to cut each pumpkin in half on a cutting board. Like this. Break it in half and then remove the stem. Then I need to split these halves in order to make them easier to peel. Next I have to remove the seeds and the middle section of the pumpkin using a spoon. I will save all of the seeds for next year's crop. There is no need to buy seeds for that. These will work just fine. Look at all the seeds I got from these four pumpkins. Waste not, want not. Now I have to peel each pumpkin section with a peeler. Pumpkin skin is usually uneven and difficult to peel. But that's not the case with these pumpkins. They are relatively easy to peel. Although it's fairly easy to handle these quarter sections, they are still quite slippery. I have to avoid peeling my own fingers. If I can't get the skin off with a peeler, 
I can always use the knife. I've already peeled each of the pumpkin sections and the peelings are in the blue basin in the sink. This will go into our compost to fertilize our garden. Next I need to cut the pumpkin up into narrow slices. Boiling will go faster if there's more surface area. Notice the color of my fingers. Orange is okay but uh, red isn't. I already put all of the pumpkin slices in this large pot. Now I need to soften them up before I store them in the freezer. I'll add enough water to submerge the pumpkin slices just like this. Then I'll boil them up on a low heat until they're soft enough to pierce with a fork. It actually took a, about an hour to boil these pumpkin slices. I let the pot cool down for 30 minutes and now I'll drain off the liquid into a plastic container. This will be used in the broth of our next batch of soup. Now I'll weigh out pumpkin portions for our bread. In this case, 230 grams. To make things easier, I'll weigh the boiled pumpkin on saran wrap using an electronic scale. Once I have the right amount, I'll fold over the saran wrap like this. Then I'll put four of these portions into a Ziploc freezing bag. Like this one here. Our recently defrosted freezer is where we store most of the produce from our garden. In addition to the frozen pumpkin, we have frozen carrots, frozen morohea or jute powder for our bread. To name just a few, we also have frozen sky beans, frozen white togan beside them, frozen peas, frozen okra, and frozen beets in the freezer. I am now in Minato Park in Shinchi, Nagasaki. This is the main venue for Chinatown's yearly Lantern Festival. There's hardly anyone here now, but during the first week of the Chinese New Year, this park is filled with lanterns, pavilion stands, and a large stage. Although I was able to attend the Lantern Festival in 2020, I won't be able to this year. It has been canceled because of pandemic restrictions. I'll go down this street over here. Here are some photos showing the typical lantern festival setup in this park. And this is a short video showing what this park looked like at night six years ago at the beginning of the year of the goat. You can see the red lanterns hanging outside this shop up ahead. They are hung by the hundreds here in Nagasaki at the beginning of the Chinese lunar year. This is what this area looks like during a typical lantern festival. Nagasaki's Chinatown is located near Dejima Island, a place that I showed you in episode 11. Nagasaki was the only major port open to foreign trade during Japan's era of isolation, and only traders from China and Holland were allowed in the city. Like Dejima Island, for the Dutch, Shinchi Island was initially a reclaimed island where Chinese traders were allowed to conduct business. Unlike the Dutch, who had to reside and work exclusively on Dejima Island, Nagasaki's Chinese traders were initially allowed to move around the city more freely.
Of course, Dejima and Shinchi are no longer islands. This shop up ahead on the left is selling mafaru, a delicious deep-fried Chinese pastry. Chinatown is where two of Nagasaki's most famous dishes, champon and sera udon, came from. These two Chinese dishes are served in most restaurants in Shinchi and, of course, throughout Nagasaki Prefecture. The name Shinchi means new land in Japanese, and it was originally meant to describe the island that was specifically built for Chinese traders. On the top right shelf of this restaurant's food display are champon and sarudon. Here's a better view of these dishes. And here are some photos that I took during previous lantern festivals in Nagasaki. Lanterns of all sizes are on display in Chuo Park along the Nakashima River, in Hamanamachi Shopping Arcade, and of course in Minato Park. Usually every year thousands of tourists attend Nagasaki's Lantern Festival. From as far back as 1562, Shinchi was the home of Chinese traders in Nagasaki. In fact, many of these Chinese traders came from Fuzo, China. As a result, Nagasaki and Fuzo became sister cities 41 years ago in 1980. Now Shinchi covers many blocks in central Nagasaki. As you can see, it is a bustling shopping mall with many stores and excellent Chinese restaurants, like the ones at the end of this shopping mall. Notice the Christmas decorations in front of this restaurant. I'll cross this street to show you the view from the bridge up ahead. This small metal dragon statue is on Shinchi Bridge, which spans a canal next to the Nakashima River the same river which borders Dejima. On the opposite side of this bridge, in the distance, you can see one of the buildings on Dejima. Shinchi Bridge is right next to the Red Genbu Gate, which marks the original location of the entrance to Shinchi Island. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what year was written on the Ziploc bag of Morahea powder in the freezer? Second, if you exclude the baby, how many people were clearly not wearing a mask in my Chinatown video clips? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comment section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 29. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. Today's B-roll involved farming, so in episode 29, my B-roll will involve cooking. See you next week.